Uh, yes, my name is Jocelyn Mozak. I'm the owner of Mozak Design. Uh, I've been working exclusively with WordPress for the last eight years. And over that time, I've had the opportunity to work with a multitude of nonprofits. And I'd have to say, nonprofits just hold a really special place in my heart. Um, in these days of all of us being so busy and having so much pulling out of time, I'm, I hold respect for those that make the time to do the things that change the world. And I found, uh, as being a web developer with WordPress, one of the ways I can give back my small way is to help those nonprofits change the world using WordPress. So I want to touch on um, four points today. The first one is WordPress. Why WordPress? Why it's a good solution? And then I'm going to look at three specific cases of nonprofits and address um, some of the way we've, we've used WordPress to enhance fundraising activities online, membership, and use the use of video to connect people. So nonprofits have a couple challenges. Um, all businesses have the challenges of keeping costs down, but nonprofits especially so because they're measured against, not only do they, do they want a lot of money to go to programs, they're also measured against it and it shows up. So it becomes important um, for them to keep this overhead down. And so the why is WordPress good? Well, it's free. Really can't get much better than that. Um, and there's also themes and plugins all over the place. So what this gives you is a great potential for starting points. Um, you know, you have the software, you can make it look good, you can add some functionality, and then you can grow with it. Um, Another challenge nonprofits face is that it's a collection of volunteers. And so one person may be on a Mac and another's on a PC and someone's using a tablet. And the nice thing with WordPress is you're not buying a piece of software that's platform specific. Um, if you can connect to Wi-Fi, you can access, access your site and you can make those posts, make those edits, do whatever needs to be done for the site. And the third reason is that, again, in a volunteer organization, you don't want a situation where there is one login and one password. Um, WordPress allows you to have each user to have their own login name, login password, and access level. So that way, as people come and leave the organization, you can add or remove as appropriate uh, without having to send out you know, a master reset password to everyone. It just, it just streamlines things. So getting into the fun stuff, um, I want to talk about one of the ways I've been able to work with um, a nonprofit to take fundraising beyond the donation forum. Uh, the Down Syndrome Network of Oregon, uh, they work with Down Syndrome families from basically birth when they find out you know, the news to all the way through adulthood, creating an environment of resources and support and community for these families. And every year they do this event called the Buddy Walk. Uh, it's about 800 people that come and it's their main fundraising activity. And the goal is all of the signups for this uh, walk, which brings in about $80,000, is done online on their website. So um, it's important that the, um, the, the people that are registering have a good experience. So one of the things we do to really support this online donation is to create um, what they're called buddy pages, but they're kind of like team pages. And so about 30 families, usually kind of the main core, because in most nonprofits, you tend to sometimes have that main core that really steps up. Um, they create these pages to honor the member and the family um, that they're fundraising on behalf of. So this is Team L's Bells. And their goal this year was to raise us $1,000, and they raised almost $2,000. Um, and the reason this is so powerful is, you know, you go to someone and you say, um, you know, please donate on behalf of my nonprofit. This makes a world of difference. That's important. But then when you can go and say, on behalf of this person, it's even more human. It's even more powerful because we all want to support what we care about. But it's even more so when we're supporting someone we love. And then we also, with a little bit of extra coding, have it such that as people contribute to the Buddy Walk, they show up on the Buddy Team page, as I have one example here, showing you know five people are going to be walking at the Buddy Walk, an additional $100 was donated, here's a message, we love you. And so there's that recognition. So it's, it's really, um, it's, it's a community feel, and again, it's got that personal piece that really makes a difference. 
Another thing to help with the donation process and to really, you know, try to increase donations because the reality is, is donations is what allows nonprofits to be able to do what they do. It's, it's just the nature of the way it works, is to provide incentives. So uh, for the donors and the fundraising teams, those that raise the most money, those that uh, get the most walkers, they receive, whether it be money for a therapy session or a piece of technology to really help these kids, but we're providing incentives, you know, please dad, please grandma, grandpa, donate to support me. You know, it's, it's, it's the heartstrings, and that's kind of important in the world of fundraising. Now, the biggest piece um, here is the donation form online. When you start a WordPress site and you need to collect donations, you just start with a simple PayPal button, and that works. Um, the biggest challenge I feel with PayPal is what I call the PayPal two-step, um, where you fill in the form, you click pay, you go off to PayPal, you come back, and then you're done. When I joined um, this particular nonprofit, that's what they had, and it was a nightmare, because uh, what you end up with is, you know, people think they paid, but then they didn't check out through PayPal, and they thought the donation went through, and they don't understand why their team isn't being, it's not being recognized on the team page, and so the donor's frustrated, and the volunteers are trying to figure it out, and it's just miserable. And that's not what you want, right? We want happy volunteer ex donation experience. And so um, what I really like is to use SSL. In this particular nonprofit, we're still using PayPal, although I personally like Stripe better because you don't have to pay the $30 monthly fee with PayPal Pro, you do. But um, we make it be a one step, which means they fill out the full form and they put in their information, they hit submit and it's done. You know that it was successful. There's no questions, there's no cleanup. It either went through or it didn't. Um, another thing you can do, and I'll lead to the software, Gravity Forms is my form of choice, and is to add um, conditional logic. So for example, on this form, you can register to walk, you can just donate money, or you can do, donate, you can do both. With this, what I can do is only show fields that are relevant to that donor. So if they're just donating money, don't ask them their shirt size. If they're only registering three people, ask for three shirt sizes. If it's 10, ask for 10. And so you can really um, go ahead and, and customize it and again, make the experience as, as good as you really can. And then always take your donor to a thank you page. Um, it's, it's okay, I think, when the form you know, updates with the thank you message, but I think it's almost even better when you take them to a fresh new page. It's that message of you were successful and then make sure you reiterate, thank you for supporting us. You're making such a difference in the lives of our community and we couldn't have done it without you. On the note of taking care of your donors, Thank you, thank you, thank you, right? Make sure you um, send a thank you email. And by the way, all the things I'm talking about here are automated. So that's an important point and they're using Gravity Forms to do it. So um, when someone submits the donation, they automatically go to the thank you page. The nonprofit automatically gets an email letting them know there was a donation made. The donor automatically gets an email saying thank you and here's the tax ID number and we couldn't do it without you. We look forward to seeing you at the event. Also, the buddy team specifically, the team that's benefiting gets an email saying, hey, so and so just registered five people to walk, gave $100, here is their name phone number, email, address, and oh, by the way, here's a sample message you can use in your thank you card. So um, what we're doing is we're trying to uh, make it easy for the teams to thank their donors and maybe reminding them to thank their donors. Uh, and then just a side thing, um, you can also very easily integrate, I would say do this with any of your forms, whether it's a contact form, whatever. Add the little checkbox. Um, this one hooks up to Mad Mimi, others use MailChimp, whatever your provider is. Any of the big ones are supported. Um, put them on your mailing list. And we actually, for uh, this nonprofit, have two lists. We have kind of the family list, which is for the, you know, the kids and like when's the next soccer thing and when's the next board, you know, the, the more community stuff. And then we have the buddy walk list, which is much more of the people who don't want to hear about that. But they do want to be told once a year, hey, you know, this event's coming up again. We can't do it without you. We really would love to see you show up. So that is that. I think that's my last slide for that one. Yep. So yeah, so software that went into it. Gravity Forms, PayPal, 
custom pages to do uh, custom post types to do the buddy team pages and a little bit of scripting. I mean, I won't I won't lie. If they hired a web developer, I got to code a little short code, but. Um, the point I actually want to make, though, is while your, your developer can certainly uh, raise the bar and make things even better, there's a lot of things I mentioned you can actually do on your own without calling the developer. I mean, all of those pieces of automation I said with Gravity Forms, the SSL, the payment, all of that stuff can be done without calling someone like me. So the next nonprofit I wanted to chat about is um, the Rotarian Group, and this is about membership. And this is a method for connecting Rotarians around the world uh, with a common goal of peace. Now, when they came to me, it was a mess. Um, what they wanted to do was to have a system where people could pay for their donation, they could pay their membership dues, be entered into the system, they would be put on this wonderful map, and then they can find people who are Rotarians local to them through the use of the map, and you know just find like-minded people. But the system they had set up, they had used WordPress, um, they were having people sign up on WordPress, and then they would have them click a PayPal button, and then they'd have to chase them down to make sure they paid, and then they'd manually put them on the map, and it was just, what it translated to was a lot of work on the side of the volunteers and not on the stuff they wanted to be doing. So what I stepped in to do was to, again, use a lot of fundamental software that's out there. Wishlist member, great membership plugin. This took care of people signing up, accepting the payment. We use Stripe, again, big fan of the SSL, the one step. So they just come to the site, they, they pay on site, um, and then they're brought to their membership page, they complete their profile. We also further uh, integrated it, and Wishlist integrates with MailChimp, so they're automatically put on a list for correspondence. Um, as a matter of fact, on their form, they check off their interest level, and we have it set up so that way they're put on different, they're tagged with different interests, so we don't bother people with topics that don't interest them. Um, and then we have a little bit of custom coding because the map is custom software, and so there's an API that makes them talk. And the impact this had, which, astounded me was uh, that it saved the nonprofit 40 hours a week of administrative work because they were doing the membership payment collection, the mailing list, the putting them on the map. If they ceased to pay, they took them off the map. All this stuff was being done by hand. That's not a fun volunteer job. You're not going to keep your volunteers having them do that because that's not what brought them to the nonprofit. Um, so there's, there's definitely some systems that can be put into place. Um, to do it well. And you know, just as a side thing, uh, certainly as a web developer, I'm more than happy to do things for you, but you can also potentially reach out to web developers as sounding boards. You may very uh, well be able to find that middle ground as a nonprofit to reach out to do a web developer and pay for the brainstorming session. Um, it will obviously be at a higher rate, but at the same time, it wouldn't be for the whole thing. And that may prove to be a good stepping stone for a nonprofit to reach out. Just a side note. And the final one, and I hope I'm not talking too fast, I tend to do that, um, is the You Can Recover project. Um, this one is connecting people all over the world who suffer with mental health issues. And the use of videos to bring them together so they can basically see others like them and realize they're not alone and there is hope. So the solution we made, it's kind of interesting. This one to me, it touches my heart because I'm someone who has dealt with depression as has my father. So it's a very personal one to me. And as a web developer who loves the like creative stuff, this is like the simplest solution. But to me, it's one of the most powerful ones of all three of these. Because all we took was WordPress. We took YouTube. We took Gravity Forms. And basically, we created a system where people could go and upload their story to YouTube and submit it through a Gravity form. And we would collect it on the website using UMAX so people could sort by diagnoses. And now there's an opportunity for people all over the world, because submissions have come in from all over the world, to find out, wow, these issues affect all of us. It's not 
cultural, it's everywhere, and to find out you're not alone, to find out that there's hope, to find out that although today really sucks for you, there's somebody out there who can tell you that while life is imperfect, there's hope. So again, as I said, I mean, all of these nonprofits are very special and important. This particular one just really pulls at my heartstrings just because of my own personal story. And so I ask you, how are you gonna use WordPress to change the world? So with that, I wanna open up the floor to any questions you guys might have. How do you use BuddyPress at all? I do not have experience with BuddyPress. Sorry. Yes? Um, difference between nonprofits and like social enterprises is would some of these things or are there any special advice you can give for social enterprises? How, uh, so he's asking about social enterprises. What would you define as a social enterprise? Well, a social enterprise is doing sort of the same work as a nonprofit except the word non is taken out. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, the most interesting challenge I have actually with nonprofits is telling them they're actually very much like businesses. You know, it's like, oh, but we're just doing stuff. It's not about the money. It's like, well, no, it's not. But as nonprofits, you need to really think about the same thing that for-profit needs to think about. Those things I went through with the fundraising, that's kind of marketing sales, right? It's all messaging. It's, it's really the same stuff. You have a lot of the same bottom lines. So the reality is, yes, a lot of this translates because all of it is about connecting with those you're trying to connect with, whether you're gonna sell them something or request the donation or whatever. Um, if you're a resource site, it's all about making sure someone coming to your site can find the information they're looking for. So really, there almost is no difference. Does that answer? Sort of. <laughs> I got a sort of. Yes? Can you tell us a little bit more about how you set up the buddy pages on the Down Syndrome site? Yeah, so the buddy pages, um, that's a little bit more, yeah, hand done. Um, I used um, custom post types with that. And then as far as the automation of like the donations showing up, that is custom PHP code, pulling information out of the SQL database from the Gravity Forms. So it basically is checking um, each of the teams had an ID, so for each of the team IDs, query to see what entries are tagged with that ID. When they um, donate, you actually, one of the drop downs is selecting the team you're donating in the name of, and so that's kind of how that process is. That sort of, yeah. I don't want to get too. Yeah. Did you, do the people set up their own uh, pages in if they are in the group? Or? Yeah, so the buddy pages, the way we work them, we've tried a couple different ways, but the way that seems to work best is just we have a very simple submission form. Uh, they fill in their name, their email, how much, what their goal is, what the title is, upload an image. This is all using Gravity Forms. And then we have some code that basically takes that Gravity Form and s creates a, a post out of it. So that's kind of the back end piece. But uh, for a while, we were letting people make their own pages in WordPress. It's user friendly to a point, but then it's not. So that was much nicer. Yes, in the back? Once the websites are built, what kind of volunteer force power is needed? And how did you go about training the volunteers? Okay, so the question is once these websites are built and they're off and running, um, what happens next? Well, it depends. I mean, a lot of these nonprofits I'm sharing with you are definitely bigger nonprofits, so I've kind of not left their lives. Um, as far as how I get um, places up and running, I'm a huge fan of doing training videos. Uh, I feel like when I train one-on-one, -on -one, it's like people go into overwhelm and it's like, whoo. Especially for a nonprofit too, where you guys have turnover. What I'm a big fan of, personally, I put on my headphones, I do a screen record, and I just walk through the dashboard. I make, I'll spend an hour, I'll just make a collection of videos. You know, How do I export from the database? How do I do this? How do I do that? And that way, um, as people come in and leave the organization, you can be like, here, go watch these, then ask me questions. Um, so that's how I do it. I also talk with them very realistically. You know, the longer I've been in business, the more I'm very realistic with people. It's like, okay, if you want to maintain this yourself, then sometimes I'm going to tell you no. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that answer is going to, you know, be miserable to maintain, be hard to understand. I'm going to tell you when you're making things too complicated for your own good, based on my own opinion. So, um, you know, it kind of depends. It's where you have to talk to your, your customer and find out what they want and then make sure your solution works for them. And sometimes it is that hard conversation of you want it to dance, but I don't think, and it's also reading your people. Um, some people are very tech savvy and they just pick it up. I've had clients where I'm like, just let it go. 
This is not your thing. You and technologies don't mix. Just let it go. Just email it to me and smile. That's the joke about the magic wand. I, I like to tell my clients I have a magic wand. They just send me an email. I go poof and it's fixed. <laughs> Problem solved. Uh, okay, sorry. Actually, I should ask from the side. Event management. Mm -hmm. Events can be pretty painful to deal with in WordPress. I was curious if you had a preferred event plugin or event. <clears throat> well, so then my next question is event management. What specifically are you trying to do? You know, they, they often have calendars that mm -hmm. maybe been uh, building in a Google calendar for a long time. So, kind of similar function. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the name. There's. Um, there is a good calendaring plugin out there that's not coming to me. If I can grab a card and I'll go pull up a site and find it. Event it might be event calendar. Yeah, there's a couple good ones out there where, yeah, you can just easily do that and they'll pull in Google feeds. So if someone's much happier working in Google, it'll just pull in the feed. Again, it's about kind of meeting, especially with volunteers, them where they're at and trying to make that solution work. Um, as far as the other things with events when it comes to sales, again, this is why I like Gravity Forms. In Gravity Forms, you can take payment, you can put them on the mailing list, you can send confirmation emails, you can send administrative emails, you can export the database. I mean, it's, I'm just not like the perfect, well, it's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, it's a paid plugin, and I think you get what you pay for, but they've got great tech support. Not to plug them, I get no reason, you know. But um, I have nothing but positive things to say. You had a question next to him? Have you found any solutions for uh, taking either Gravity Forms or otherwise to be able to use a webcam or your phone to upload a video and then send that to YouTube instead of the other way around? So. I mean, you can always up, no. I'm not saying it's probably not possible, but the question sometimes becomes why. And one thing I, I tend to tell, tell people also with WordPress to be careful is to sometimes try to not make it do what it's not made to do. You know, people are like, oh, I want to have it send out my newsletters. I'm like, why? There's a gazillion providers that integrate quite nicely that that's what they do all day long. So, I mean, yes, you can upload a file Maybe you could send it, but my question is again, why? I, I mean, anything's possible. Specifically, we're trying to capture testimonials just without having to send people to YouTube. To well, you can certainly upload a file through Gravity Forms. You'd have to check this. I don't know what file. You might run into file size limitations. I don't know. You may. I don't know. That would just be a brainstorming question. But you certainly can upload files, yeah. um, and then you want to restrict the type of files you upload for security safety. Yeah. Yes. Right. I think it's thirty nine dollars. <laughs> but no, you're right. Okay, so budget. It's a reality. It's like businesses. It's a reality. When you're starting, it's not going to look like when you're eight years later. I mean, I look at my own website. You know, it, it is not where it was. I am not where I was. Um, I, I think sometimes that's where you have the reality conversations of what's essential. We do what's essential. And then um, someone was mentioning uh, if I did anything with crowdsourcing, my answer is no, but she was mentioning that, that would be a good option for, for nonprofits to consider, and I hadn't thought about it, but again, it, it becomes a donation. The other thing I guess nonprofits could think about is um, you can get, don you can get um, grants and earmark them. Technology is probably a very easy one to say, I want to do this for this specific reason, and, and maybe go after some of those grants. You gotta get creative, but I mean, the best thing to do is like anything where you're dreaming is to say, okay, those are all my dreams. Now, what's my essentials? Tackle those. Um, but the themes are free, you know, at least, or again, we're talking $50. I mean, nothing is free free, but it's not bad. Um, and then, you know, just, uh, yeah, know that it's gonna grow and mature. Yeah? Wish list uh, member. Um, do you have any problems with people not wanting to log in, remember passwords? Um, you, 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 you found like a 
a single sign-in solution. That yeah. I, I'm not a huge, memberships, I do sometimes, my nonprofits want memberships when I'm not so sure they really should. Because yeah, for unless you're really delivering something good for that membership, it's kind of like, why are people jumping through these hoops? Um, so yeah, I mean, as far as single login, certainly if let's say you've got a church and or um, the, the Cub Scouts, for example, uh, they have photo gallery. And so the photo gallery needs to be sort of secure, but not like, completely anal secure. So you can just use a private page. You can just password protect a page. So if you don't need that super high level of, you know, thou, you know security, that is actually a great solution. You can make a whole, um, I've done this, uh, thanks for your question. I've done this for, um, I've made like board areas where it's like all of our resources and, and all of our stuff, you just put it in a private area and it's, it's the stuff that like no one's gonna share and it's not the end of the world. Uh, that would be, that would be my thoughts there. I remember your question, I think, <laughs> looking at you, uh, someone asked me a great question um, about PayPal. Do you want me to speak to that? Yeah. yeah, someone before this asked me a good question, if I have time, um, about uh, my suggestion of doing the SSL and, and taking credit card on site and the question of people having trust in PayPal and preferring to maybe pay with PayPal. And I was expressing that you can actually set up, first of all, the gravity form to have two choices. With the conditional logic, you can say pay, net, pay here with credit card or check out through PayPal. And based on what they select, you can actually send them over to PayPal or have them pay with the credit card. I did this on one nonprofit, so I only have one data point, but I can tell you almost nobody uses PayPal and everyone uses the credit card. Um, one data point. Uh, but you know you can you can set it up and test. You know there's a, you don't have to just say this is how you're doing it. But that that was my experience. PayPal, PayPal requires you to open an account with them. Correct. That's well, no, you not to pay. No, not to pay. And I mean most people don't realize you can pay. This is the other thing. So PayPal trips people up because they don't realize they don't need to have an account and they can actually pay with a credit card. But it's kind of hidden and it can make donors crabby. <laughs> <laughs> Saw a question over here. I think. Or am I at it? No, I'm not being told I'm out of time, so. So, you just do the SL sales to make it on the whole website? So no, I do it only on the donation page. Uh, my understanding is SSL, I think, slows your site down. So, I just do it only on the, the page that's appropriate. Okay, one more question. I should have brought my candy. Come on, questions. Is there, is there a recommended plugin that's really good for nonprofits? You were mentioning that in the beginning. Really good for nonprofits. Well, it appears one of my favorites is Gravity Forms. Um, it comes down to what you're needing. Uh, with a lot of these plugins, Event Calendar is one. I think if you're a nonprofit, sometimes affiliate, if it's religious affiliated, they'll say no, but sometimes always ask if there's complimentary. So that's another way to go, guys. You know, if you want to do these, these plugins, you might be able to email them and say, hey, we're a starting nonprofit. Can you help us out? Um, hosts usually give you a 10, 20% discount. I think a few give free. Um, what else as a nonprofit? Yeah, it doesn't hurt to ask. They may very well tell you, no, I can't give it to you free, but here's a 30% off coupon. You know, you never, you never know. Uh, definitely play the card and ask. Um, but, you know, when it says what's an essential one, it comes back to the question of what are you trying to accomplish? Just like a business, it, it's really what are you trying to accomplish? Yes? No, I suppose I don't. Could I? Should I? Maybe. We can always do more, right? Uh, yes, as a, as a developer, I certainly, um, something, well, so definitely the, the giving one person sort of the administrative, but then the other people as much as possible sort of lesser so. Um, and I could go in if I wanted to and better refine the dashboard to actually be a little more volunteer friendly. That's true. Um, these are all interesting things that come down to that balance of budget and cost, right? The more time I spend making it look pretty, the more I'm charging, so, <laughs> you know, that's a tricky one, too. Um, it's really knowing your client and trying to do your best by them and for them. Um, yeah. So, yes, very good point. We can all strive to do better. <laughs> All right, I think that's my time.
I hope this has been helpful for everyone, and I hope you've got some ideas. <laughs>